Hi guys and girls, welcome back to Watch The Time. Thanks for tuning back in. Thanks for coming back to see me. I'm really pleased you've done so. And I'm really, really, really pleased to about to bring you my review for the Rebus Origin. I didn't buy one of these um, when they went pre-order or anything. I didn't even buy one from the website. I looked it up on eBay because I just wanted to get one as quickly as possible. Uh, someone bought one, didn't fall in love with it. They sold it to me basically at cost. The guy was really cool though. I paid for it on the wrong card. <laughs> I was having a nightmare at work. But he thankfully cancelled the order, redid it. Yeah, gentlemen, top man. Um, but yeah, I really wanted to get one in. I was on the fence to begin with, to be honest, because I know, I'm not going to name any names, but I know there's lots of people now that are in this sort of space that sort of decide to make a watch. And from afar, I've not had hands on with lots of these watches, but sometimes it's a bit more style over substance. It's maybe capitalising on it on your position. Um, so I, I'm, I'm going to be honest. I wanted to get this in to see if it was more hype or if it was, like I said in my, if if it was, if it has Jody nailed it or is it just one more watch? That's why I put it as in my description because that's how I see, that's how I saw the whole thing. Uh, lots of colours to choose from. I'm going to say after, but I don't think it's a hype thing, to be honest. When I was on the fence about it, I'll be honest, um, just because you'd think that people that review watches already, they're going to make these amazing watches. It doesn't always translate that way because you've got cost and stuff to think about. And that's why on my channel, I never start slagging off a brand because there's lots of nuance. There's lots of problems to solve and stuff that's not always possible, especially if you want to make affordable watches because you have to watch the, the, the bottom line and stuff. But um yeah, I really, really wanted to get, look at this watch. Um, like I say, it, it doesn't. It, it's not a hype thing, to be honest. I'll say it off the bat. It's one that I've made space for in my collection, so I'm going to say that off the bat. There's not many watches I do that for, but I'm going to stop going on because you want to see the watch. I'm going to go through some bits and pieces. It, the person who bought it, who I bought it off on eBay, also bought the strap pack, which comes with three straps for like 27 quid or whatever it is. Highly recommend that, to be honest. But we're going to go through the video now, so I'm going to shut up. One of my longest intros for a while because I had a bit to say. But yeah, with that, with that being said, there's no better time to get the camera turned around and get on with it. Hi right, guys, so this is the watch. This is the packaging it comes in. Actually pretty cool. I've said many, many times I do like it when they use this sort of packaging. Uh, it comes with a cleaning cloth. I will keep that handy actually. Uh, Rebus marked on there. There's the watch uh, that I've already, already spoken about. And that's what we're going to run through in just a few moments. Let me just put that to the side. Yeah, so you've got enough. For two watches in here so you can also also transport um another watch and all that good stuff inside it sort of like feels like leverettes i would say i wouldn't say it's leather but yeah two compartments for you to store watches comes with a, a card saying thanks for the support and stuff so thank you and it also comes with a warranty card signed for two years as you can see the date was the 16th of february so the person really didn't have it very long when i purchased it but um that's that's that as I said, also, it did come with this pack, a strap pack. This is the black one. comes with sort of like a canvas, leather, rubber, and all this. Yeah, I think, as you know, I think it's a canvas and two rubber straps, I believe. But, um, yeah, I'm not, at the time of recording, I hadn't done the wrist shots that you would have seen in the intro that comes afterwards. But, um, yeah, you'll see, you'll see them as well. So, it gives you the option to buy them as well. But there we are. But, guys, this is the watch. Uh, when I was looking it up on the website, I probably would have opted for the black one. But now I've had the white, white sort of silvery dial in hand. Uh, I've not regretted it, to be honest. It's actually really, really nice. Unlike anything I've got. And that dial is something to behold as well. But yeah, so this is the Erebus Origin. Um, inside, it's running an automatic Seiko N835 movement. I'll bring the information up about this movement now. Rugged, reliable. You've heard this from me. You've heard it from other watch reviewers. Uh, there's good reason they use these sort of movements in watches. They're sort of bulletproof, aren't they? Uh, 21,600 beats per hour, 24 joules, 41 hour power reserve. Um, yeah, you can pick these up for sort of in around 20, 30 pound. Um, and they just run and run to be honest. Uh, this one, this one's running sort of two seconds fast a day. Um, yeah, outstanding. See, that's the Seiko NH35 movement. Also, has a 4R35 when in, actual, in an actual Seiko watch. So, there we are. The construction of the watch, aside from the crystal. Is all 316 cell and obviously the bezel insert, excuse me, is all 316 cell stainless steel. Pretty much all brushed to be honest, guys. Even the fasted edge on the case is is brushed. So it's very tool like in the, in the aesthetic. 
But yeah, finished really, really nicely in terms of the brushing. Got the clasp. I've got a few love scratches on there at the moment where I've been wearing it for so long. Uh, but yeah, all 316s, 316L stainless steel, put my teeth in. So as I said, that's the bezel, the case, crown, the bracelet, the clasp. As you can see, it's got on the fly adjust, solid end links. Um, and so yeah, everything you can see aside from the crystal and the bezel insert is all 316L stainless steel. Nice, nicely brushed. And like I said, giving it that real tall aesthetic that you get with brush watches. The case thickness of the watch is 12.5 millimeters. The case diameter, I normally measure sort of the 8 to the 2. It was coming at bang on 41 millimeters. When you go for the 9 to the 3, including the crown when it's screwed up, it was coming at a 44.2 millimeters. The lug width on this is 20. That does taper down to 18 and back up to 20 mil at that fully milled clasp and the lug to lug tip to tip. So it is. 47 millimeters so very compact but with those sort of protruding links that you get a little bit there that does come in so it's a bit unnecessary really but it still it doesn't hurt it it does come in at 51.9 millimeters when you measure at those furthest points so do bear that in mind the bezel on this i will say it doesn't align um, and i'll bring a picture up now actually just to sort of show that um, yeah it doesn't align it doesn't matter where i put it which is a little bit disappointing it doesn't ruin it too much for me but i'd have expected it to align nonetheless but it's a 120 click unidirectional bezel i'll let you take a listen i'll go all the way around before i give my sort of feedback but yeah as you can see this goes a little bit past or a little bit before depending on but yeah 120 click unidirectional bezel the bezel's brushed ceramic which is really really cool actually i do like that um but yeah Rock solid to be honest, good coining on there. 120 click, no bounce, no back play. Very, very good bezel. If it lined up, it'd have been perfect, but not quite. The crown is situated at the three o'clock. It's a screw down crown, it's got crown guards, but really doesn't hurt in terms of screwing and unscrewing. It's been really, really easy to deal with. Even me wearing gloves at the moment, it's not a problem at all. The case back is screwed down, uh, deep etched with the Erebus logo. And just all the bits of information on there you'd expect to see. So there we are. The bracelet, as I said, got a couple of mils of taper. H-Link bracelet, my favorite type of bracelet. They're super, super comfy. Screw pins, just to make it easy to change out. You've got the clasp, which is fully milled. Ariba stamped on there as well. And on the fly adjust system that we've become quite accustomed to seeing now on lots of different watches. Uh, like So all you do, push it in. Want to release it, press the button, and there you go. And then I normally put it on like that and adjust it while I'm wearing it. It just makes it that bit easier. But um, yeah, you have the option to do so. I do like the on-the-fly adjust system. It's becoming pretty commonplace now, but it does make it really nice on hot days and stuff just to give yourself a bit more a bit more room. So yeah, that's the, that's the clasp. The crystal covering the dial is a sapphire crystal and it is beautiful. The clarity on it is fantastic. As you can see, I've got three different lights that I use when I record. And it's not really offering too much problems by way of reflection. So that's good. The water resistance of the watch, you'll be able to see down there, is 200 meters. So that would give you 20 atmospheres of water resistance and the weight will appear in the top right. So with three links removed, it's coming in at 166.4 grams. With those three links back in, you're probably in and around 175, 180 grams. So a good amount of heft. It does feel like you're wearing sort of Quite a premium watch, to be honest, guys, I would say, because of that. But, um, yeah, that's that. But let's have a look at the dial in just a bit more detail. So the dial is done really, really well. Okay, so what you have, you have this sort of white, almost silvery sort of mottled dial. Um, looks really, really nice. As I said, nothing's been applied. You've got square buttons everywhere except for the 3, 9, and 12. You've got a double button at the 12. Um black outer which is what you also have on the hands you've got consistency in terms of how the hands and the indices are done you've got the date window at the six o'clock position my preferred location for the date is the six just because it doesn't mess up the symmetry of the watch you've got a rebus printed onto the dial just below the double buttons at the 12 you've got a slightly different shape button at the, at the six o'clock obviously making way 
for the for the date and the date border. But I do like the fact that they've done it in such a way where it's the same sort of size um, and width as the as the indice they've put there. So yeah, nicely thought out. As I said, Erebus or Erebus, I don't know how I'm pronouncing that, but with the logo just below the 12 and just above the date window at the 6, you've got Origin, 20 atmospheres, just highlighting the fact it's got 200 meters of water resistance. Like I said, the hands and indices are white with a black surround. Uh, the dial is stunning. Um, I like the fact they've put orange accents. So you've got orange markers at every hour inside where the indices is, where the minute track is. Uh, you got And you've got that pop, obviously, from the end of the second hand as well. Good bit of contrast against the white with the black. Works really, really well. The loom on this, guys, I bring up now is very, very good. I'm sure you wouldn't you wouldn't um, think any otherwise because, obviously, Jody knows watches. He obviously knows that loom on a dive watch is pretty important, isn't it? So, yeah, he hasn't, he hasn't messed about. I left this for a couple of minutes. Uh, I will obviously cram that into a lot shorter period of time now. But, yeah, two minutes. I hadn't died. I hadn't charged it either. And when I did charge it, um, I did some other shots, uh, which I'll probably try and put in somewhere. It glowed for a few a few hours. It was phenomenal. Um, I was very, very impressed with the loom. Um, so, yeah, that's the loom, guys. That's everything going on there. Like I said, Seiko NH35 movement inside. You'd have seen this hacking, hand-winding movement many times. You take the crown all the way out. It hacks. You take it out to the first position. You can scroll through the date, which you see it down at the 6. And like I say, take it all the way out. You can change the time and all that good stuff and then put it back in. And like I say, I, I do like the way this crown is done. Really, really easy to deal with. No problems there. So let me just pop it on the wrist quickly. Give you an idea of what it looks like on my wrist. Okay, so guys, this is what it looks like on me. I think it's a really good size. Uh, the link's protruding a little bit in the center link. Doesn't really hurt it because they, they sort of go downwards anyway. Yeah, really, really well-sized watch. Actually, it feels more like a 40 mil than a 41, if I'm honest. But there we go. That's what it looks like on me. Okay, so guys and girls, that would now take me swiftly on to what I think is pants and pucker about the watch. If you've ever watched before, you know, I always start with pants. I like to kind of hide with pucker. So what I think is pants is probably hard, hardly surprising, not very much, to be honest, because I do really like this watch. There's two things I'm going to mention, and one of them is just a little bit more of a being me being surprised than anything else. But the first thing is the bezel alignment. Yeah, the fact that's off was, like I said, very, very surprising. I didn't expect it. I thought that would have lined up perfectly, but no, not the case. As they would say normally, we're in a Seiko, but yeah, we know what Seiko's bezels are like. And also the movement. Yeah, I have no problem with the Seiko movement, none whatsoever. But I do know how much Jody likes the Miyota high beat movements, the 9000 series. And I would have probably expected him to put it in this. I know it's probably a way of cutting costs. But yeah, that's one thing I would have expected. But they're the two things I'm going to go over. The bezel alignment and potentially the movement. What I think is pucker. Yeah, the crystal clarity. I think the crystal clarity on this is really good. Um, I've, yeah, sometimes when I'm wearing it outside, it doesn't look like there's a crystal at all, which is testament to the uh, AR coating. The date location, I, I mentioned, is my preferred location to have the date just because it doesn't mess up the symmetry of the watch, which I think it makes it just look better because of that. The loom, yeah, the loom on this is very, very good. Like I said, I charged it with under a UV light for a few seconds and it went for hours. Um, so yeah, good, good loom. The bezel clicks in terms of how positive they are. Yeah, very, very good. Perfect bezel, really, apart from the alignment. I should, yeah, the case shape, it's really got, if I can capture this for you, it has really got some Seiko Samurai, samurai vibes, in my opinion, uh, which is no bad thing. Not exactly the same, but the sort of sharp angles and angular case makes me think of a Seiko Samurai. The bracelet, the H-Link bracelet, yeah, there's a couple to choose from. Um, my preferred bracelet. I just think they're the most comfortable, if I'm honest. The crown, as I've mentioned a few times, is nicely deep etched, but just the engagement, how smooth it is to deal with is good. And the clasp, I know you guys probably expect it at this point now because everyone's doing it, but having the on-the-fly adjust, having, have, having it so well finished, double safety pushes, and making it so easy to sort of uh, make it a little bit bigger or smaller is great. So they're the things I mentioned. I'll go with the crystal clarity, date location, loom, bezel clicks, case shape, bracelet, crown, and clasp of the watch. And guys and girls, would I recommend this watch? 
it seems crazy to even answer that now, given what I've been saying. But yeah, I really would. I do not think this is a sort of hype job or anything like that. I think they've absolutely nailed it. Lots of colours to choose from. Um, so yeah, there's going to be something really in keeping with your taste. Uh, so yeah, I would definitely recommend it, guys. Really, really would. In fact, I'll bring up some of the colours next to me now before um, we we, uh, crack, we finish the video. But um, yeah, I think there's going to be something in keeping with your taste for those colours. Most definitely. But as always, say, guys and girls, please let me know what you think about this watch, more importantly, and maybe any other watches you may want to see on the channel. And as always, say, don't forget to like, subscribe, and always watch the time. Take care, guys. All the very best. <laughs>